I'm gonna trick the Etsy algorithm in thinking that I'm somebody else and not just anybody, my ideal customer for this product. Personalized bridesmaids apron. I'm going to create an avatar and then in cognito mode, I will behave like my ideal customer. I'm gonna take a screenshot of the first page on the keywords bridesmaids aprons, then I'm gonna mess with the algorithm for the whole day, and then we're gonna see how the first page changed. And that's gonna give me a better idea on how I should design my product so that I can tailor to my ideal customer, and I'm gonna have the algorithm help me with that one. Pretty much I'm having the algorithm design my product. That's exactly right, but first let's change out of this. Wait a minute, that's not right, that's just a different color. Ugh, why is this so difficult? Let me see. All right, let's see. Um, let's. See. Okay, I see. Ugh. Almost. Let's try it again. Ugh. Finally. Nice. Getting magic is difficult. But you know what? Subscribing to this channel is not. So incognito mode is the ability to block Etsy's understanding of who you are. You're pretty much a Mr. Nobody. Now, the moment we start to mingle with the algorithm or search and click and favor, well, then Etsy's going to start to build up kind of a sort of a understanding of who we are and then it will start to recommend and change the results that we get when we're searching for particular keywords. So our goal here is to behave like our customer, and then we wanna see the listings that will be recommended to our customers, well, at least what Etsy think our customers would like, and we wanna design our product to match that, because if we do that, then Etsy will be on our side when it comes to recommending our product to our customer. Now, the CEO of Etsy claims that it, Etsy recognizes the types of styles and designs a person is interested in. So if you've bought pillows and wall hangings or you favorited or clicked on things, it will then recommend the coaster that you want. The proper d design and, and style of coaster, you're like, oh, that's perfect with my whole set. Etsy's like, yeah, I know. I've been tracking you in your sleep. <laughs> Maybe not in your sleep, but the point is that Etsy is really good about trying to figure out what style you like. So in order to trick Etsy, we have to get into character. We have to understand what guidelines are we gonna follow in order to make Etsy believe that we are our customer. And that I went on Pinterest, Instagram, and even Etsy itself, I went on the admirers of my competitors and see what those customers are favoring, liking, what kind of wedding are they trying to put together? What styles or color palettes or maybe even fonts that they want to see on the aprons. And so once I compiled the style, which it kind of looks like that. There's a lot of blush, there's a lot of greenery, a lot of white, and these are the fonts that they really like, apparently. And then this is the color palette. So I'm gonna stick within those elements. After looking through Instagram, Pinterest, and Etsy itself, I realized that my ideal customer is a 39-year-old female that is getting ready for a wedding. She likes to wear three sizes, two big sweatshirts. She's into fedoras. She likes coffee. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be clicking on third party things like that, like hats and fedoras and whatnot. So we're gonna try to do as much as we can to behave. All right, so let's jump on my computer and let's take a look. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on incognito window, bam. We're now pretty much undercover. Now, I've also cleared out my cache, so we're trying to be as unnoticed as possible. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go on etsy.com, and as you can see, the whole searches are very generic. They're not any specific Thing. We're gonna go personalize or made aprons. We're gonna go on pers bridesmaids aprons. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna zoom out. Well, let's just go ahead and zoom out a little bit. All right, and we're gonna screenshot this. This is our gonna be. This is going to be our um, screenshot. This is gonna be what we're gonna be looking at after uh, we mingle. We'll see which of these disappeared. Is are we gonna see more of this kind of style? or are we gonna see more of linen, or are we gonna see more of print-on-demand stuff? What we're gonna do is, because we're trying to uh, target bridesmaids uh, gifting, so we're gonna go bridesmaid gifts, okay? So we're just gonna go on a, on a broad, whoops, on a broad search, we are going to, what I'm gonna do is I like to filter to best sellers, because we wanna find the best seller items and start from the top, and then work our way down. For example, uh, I'm definitely gonna click on this. I'm not gonna click on this just because I didn't see much of these colors. Uh, though they like coffee, and this kind of plays with the coffee thing, but I don't like the style at which this is going. This is the style that I've seen a lot more. This is the style I've seen a lot more. So we're, we're gonna ignore that. We're gonna click on this. We're just gonna open up several windows. I'm just gonna show you the first few minutes of me doing this, and then you'll understand how we're gonna do it. So uh, these colors definitely pa part of our color scheme. Um, we're gonna click on this. Uh, hopefully I'm not wasting some, did I just click on any ads yet? 
Hopefully I'm not doing that because they do not want to spend their money. Uh, okay, so we got blush going. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, looking through it, spending some time on it. We're going to be opening up stores. We're going to be favoring listing. And if the store has everything that we want on that, uh, we're going to favor the shop. What we're going to do when we're, we're going to go on admires, we're going to look at the photos uh, or listings that the admirers like. So if, if they like this, uh, we're going to see if it matches. And this does not match, for example. There's a lot of glitter. There's a lot of these bold, and we know that ours like fonts that are cursive. We're gonna click on this, and if we're gonna match, yep, this matches our color palette. We're gonna we're gonna look through. We're gonna spend some time opening up. So pretty much, this is what we're gonna do. And for the whole day, I'm going to be sticking to the list that we put together in style, fonts, and color palettes. And then we'll see what happens uh, after a full day of uh, you know look playing around with the algorithm. A few moments later. All right, it is the end of the day. I'm going to look at the results. Now, I didn't do it the whole day. I just, because I have to fulfill orders, I got a, you know, I got a business to operate. So I just jump on it, follow the rules, and did nothing but um, click follow the rules of fonts, palettes, and styles. And everything that did not look like that, I did not click on. Here we have before. And this is what after looked like. After the same keywords were typed in, and I got a result, and this is what I got. So here, here's the difference. The, the, the boxes that will appear on the left is what disappeared, and the boxes in the green will, is what appeared. So quite the change. So almost a half of the search results have changed. And I would argue, now this one right here disappeared. I would argue this one is not doing well either because this is advertisement. So I'm going to just cancel this one out as well. Um, also, what I noticed is this style right here disappeared out of my page completely. It says, you know what, this kind of person does not like. And that aligns with our style, right? This is, this is more like this uh, old school uh, classic look to it. When I'm creating my listing, some of the things that I'm going to be doing is making sure this white and airy. And I'm also going to make sure that there's that modern um, thin fonts, simple um, look to it with blush and, and I did like that this appeared here. It means that there's, they're, they're, they want some color. Now again, I'm gonna look through a lot of other keywords. I'm gonna like, for example, embroidered personalized bridesmaids aprons or personalized, you know, personalized bridesmaids gifts, not even aprons. And, and I'm gonna see what changed as well in the same fashion. Now ideally you wanna screenshot before and after on all those keywords, but we didn't get a chance to do that, but I'll still look and see if I can find the commonalities on what happened on the after in other keywords. Looking at more in depth on why these specific listings rose to the top and the other ones rose down. We're gonna be designing our product based on that. Remember, we're trying to create a product that targets our customers, our ideal customers. Now, also, there's also not that much that's changed. Sure, there's, what, six listings that changed, but we have to realize that there's not that much change, and that means this section of the market is perfect for me to disrupt. That means I can design based on what the changes happen, but also push further and using this, the, the standards that we've discovered through Pinterest, Instagram, and Etsy itself, we're going to be designing products according to that. Ranking in 2022 has completely changed the game and understanding how ranking works on Etsy in the modern day. And in order for you to understand how ranking works on Etsy nowadays, you got to check out this video.